Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, it always surprises me how often we see requests for Crossfire and SLI benchmarks, particularly uh, given that we flat out tell you guys not to invest in either technology. We've been doing that for years now, but there still seems to be a lot of interest. It's perhaps even more surprising given the fact that AMD, and in particular Nvidia, have made no secret about the fact that they are pulling back on investment into multi-GPU technology. I've been pretty stubborn when it comes to multi-GPU benchmarks, and for at least a year now I've basically refused to check out either Crossfire or SLI, but recently I did have two RX 590 cards land at my feet, and I thought, why not? Seems like there are enough of you that want to see some updated testing, and well, I've probably made you hold out long enough now. Probably not long enough for it to be any good, I suspect, but I've made you wait long enough for the update. Today's video sponsor is PCB Way. If you're after a custom PCB for your next project, look no further. They make high quality PCBs at affordable prices. Right now, new members get a $5 bonus, which covers their first order of 10 one to two layer PCBs. And they also offer an assembly service. Furthermore, right now, all PCB assembly orders enjoy free shipping worldwide. So check them out. Link is in the video description. Last time we visited in-depth crossfire testing was back when Matt was still hosting the channel and I was locked away benchmarking, never to be seen, or at least that was the plan at the time. So you can blame Matt for allowing my mug on the channel. Anyway, back in June of 2016, we grabbed two RX 480 graphics cards, threw them in our test rig and enabled crossfire. For the most part, the results were quite good, but as we've come to expect from multi-GPU technology, the experience was far from flawless. Of the 23 games tested, six didn't work at all with Crossfire enabled. And the problem here is for the games that didn't work with Crossfire, the RX 480 cards were on average 47% slower than the GTX 1080, but just 9% slower when working. So for today's test, we have 20 much newer games, and we're gonna see how well the two RX 590s compare to just a single card in all 20 titles at 1080p and 1440p. For comparison, we have nine other graphics cards, including high-end models such as Vega 64 and the RTX 2070. I'll be discussing the results for a dozen of the titles tested with the rest of the graphs available for free on our Patreon page, and the link will be in the video description. For this benchmark, I used my Core i7 8700K GPU test rig, which is overclocked to 5 gigahertz and is featured inside the Corsair Crystal 570X, packing 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3400 memory. Then for the AMD driver, we used Radeon Adrenaline 18.11.2. Okay, I think that's about everything. Let's get into the results. First up, we have Battlefield 5, and unfortunately, we're not seeing any support for Crossfire in this title. So no extra performance from the second card at 1080p, and the same was also true at 1440p. That's really quite surprising, as Crossfire did work in Battlefield 1. Here we see a mild 33% gain for the average frame rate at 1080p. So not great, but a big improvement over nothing, and scaling did improve at 1440p. Here the RX 590s in Crossfire boosted performance by 46%, Again, not amazing, but it is worlds better than what we're currently seeing in Battlefield 5. The best example of crossfire scaling that I've come across in this new batch of games was seen in Strange Brigade. Here the Crossfire RX 590s boosted the average frame rate by almost 90%, and better yet, frame time performance was still very good. Then at 1440p we see over 90% scaling, hitting 94%, so this is an exceptional result for the Crossfire 590s. AMD's Radeon GPUs perform quite poorly in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so unsurprisingly Crossfire support is non-existent in this title. So whereas the 590s were faster than the RTX 2070 in Strange Brigade, here they're 44% slower. Moving on to Hitman 2, and again another title that lacks Crossfire support, and therefore running with the technology enabled actually slightly reduces performance. This is also seen at 1440p, so we have another example of why multi-GPU technology really isn't a good investment. Still, it's not all bad, and another example of that is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Here we see a 48% performance boost at 1080p, and this placed the RX 590s alongside the GTX 1080 and Vega 64. Furthermore, scaling is drastically improved at 1440p, and now we're seeing a 61% performance boost, and this placed the 590s on par with the RTX 2070, so pretty solid result there. Next up we have Forza Horizon 4, and this is another title where Crossfire isn't supported, and therefore we saw no gains at 1080p or 1440p. In fact, we saw a slight performance regression. To my surprise, Monster Hunter World does support Crossfire. 
though the frame time performance at 1080p was a little sketchy. Whereas we see a 32% boost for the average frame rate, we only see a 14% improvement for the frame time performance. Jumping to 1440p does help to iron out this issue, but even so, scaling is below 40%, which is pretty weak and certainly doesn't justify the investment of a second graphics card. Here we have an example of a title that looks good when focusing on the average frame rate, but the experience was actually pretty horrible. Despite averaging 100 FPS in Star Wars Battlefront 2 at 1080p, the average frame time performance was pretty shocking, dropping down to well below the result of a single 590. The game was basically unplayable, for example a constant 30 FPS would provide a much nicer experience. Unfortunately the frame time issue did persist at 1440p. I'm not sure if there is a workaround for this title, but out of the box the performance is pretty horrible using Crossfire, and you're certainly much better off with a single RX 590. Frame time performance was also a little sketchy in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, though nowhere near as bad as what we just saw in Battlefront 2. The issue was a little more noticeable at 1440p, and although the average frame rate is much improved with a second 590, the overall experience really wasn't. And due to the disparity between the average and 1% low result when using Crossfire, I'd rather play this title on a single 590. I also saw a little bit of stuttering going on in Far Cry 5, and this was present at both 1080p and 1440p. Project Cars 2 was another title where we did see performance gains, but the frame time performance wasn't great and much worse than that of a higher end single GPU graphics card. Now, please note all graphic card configurations, with the exception of the Crossfire cards, were tested in Crisis 3 to measure power consumption. However, Crossfire isn't working in Crisis 3, so we used F1 2018 as this was one of the better games for scaling. Typically, you're looking at a total system increase of around 60% when using a second RX 590, and that leads to a pretty brutal power consumption figure. Here the Crossfire 590s pushed total system draw to 576 watts, and I did observe just over 600 watts in Strange Brigade. This is quite a bit more than even a Vega 64 liquid graphics card, and almost twice that of a single RTX 2070. So pretty horrible stuff when it comes to power consumption. Okay, so when compared to a single 590, we saw a 37% boost on average to the frame rate at 1440p, though that figure alone is a little bit misleading. Frame time performance in Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Deus Ex Mankind Divided uh, was very bad. I'd much rather use a single card in those titles, while stuttering was a bit of an issue in Far Cry 5, Project Cars 2, and The Witcher 3. Normally I also test with Dirt 4, but that title suffered serious graphical glitches with Crossfire enabled, so I had to drop it from the batch of games that I tested with. So, are you better off buying a higher end single GPU graphics card, or two cheaper graphics cards? Well, if you hadn't already worked that one out, here is your answer. The RTX 2070 costs $500 US, while the RX 590s cost $280 each, and even if you compared the RTX GPU to a pair of $200 RX 580s, the outcome would be much the same. Get the more expensive, higher end graphics card. When everything's going to the multi-GPU plan, the RX 590s killed it, beating the RTX 2070 by a whopping 25% margin. But out of the 20 games tested, we saw that kind of margin uh, exactly once. Next best was 14% in F1 2018, 9% in Prey, 5% in Project Cars, uh, but the frame time performance was quite poor, 4% in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, but again the frame time performance was quite poor, and 3% in The Witcher 3, and again, frame time performance was suboptimal. So in two titles, the Crossfire 590 showed the RTX 2070 Watt 4, and in everything else, they got their PCI Express connectors handed to them. Two years later, we find that once again, multi-GPU technology, uh, it seems like a good idea on paper, but in practice, it is a bit of a fail. Uh, it's really only ever made sense for those with money to burn. For example, right now, RTX 2080 Ti SLI graphics cards are about the only multi-GPU configuration that makes sense, but in almost every way, they make no sense. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is that multi-GPU technology really only makes sense if you're at the end of the road. You've got the fastest possible single GPU solution and yeah, you can't get any more performance without adding a second one. So if you've got money to burn on an RTX 2080 Ti and you want another one just because then I guess SLI is okay. Uh, it doesn't really make sense if you want to use SLI for say RTX 2080s. Uh, in that case, I would just get a single RTX 2080 Ti as you'll receive smoother performance in the vast majority of titles. As for the RX 590s in Crossfire, well, 
I'd much rather have a single Vega 64 graphics card, for example. Uh, it's extremely rare that two 590s will provide higher frame rates than a single Vega 64 card, while also offering smoother, stutter-free gaming. If you're only ever going to play games like F1 2018 that support Crossfire really well, then getting two, say, RX 570s, for example, costing around $300, would be a hard combo to beat. In fact, I don't think you can beat it. But who buys graphics cards to only ever play one or maybe two games? Of course, there are other drawbacks that I'm yet to discuss, such as heat and power consumption. Those two 590s were dumping so much heat into the Corsair Crystal 570X case, and this meant more money would need to be invested in case fans, and even then, you're still running hotter due to the way the cards are stacked. You'll also lose out on the power supply. The RTX 2070 system works without an issue with a 500 watt unit, and 600 watts would be more than enough. The Crossfire 590s, though, they'll need an 800 watt unit. 750 watts would be the absolute minimum here. And although we're only talking about a 20 to $30 increase in PSU cost, that's still a factor that needs to be considered. Ultimately though, it is the poor support that kills these multi-GPU setups, and that's why I feel no one should burden themselves with SLI or Crossfire technology, especially if they're trying to gain higher end performance with mid-range cards. Just buy a faster single GPU, much less stressful. Anyway, I think we will end the video there. If you did enjoy the video, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the work we do at Harrowbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I will see you again next time.